Last up tonight are Steve Russell and Giles Atwell, two men completely consumed by confectionery. I describe myself as a, uh, as a Willy Wonka. And I've got chocolate in the veins. Giles and Steve think their business idea could be their golden ticket. We think we make a ridiculously good product. We see no reason why we can't get to a turnover of 50 or 100 million in a few years. Good luck. Hi there, dragons. I'm Steve Russell. And I'm Giles Atwell. And we are the, the Fresh, Fresh Chocolatiers. Chocolatiers. <laughs> We're here today to ask for £90,000 in exchange for 9% of our business. We have over 30 years between us working on world famous chocolate brands. And I have a 100 year family history in chocolate. We take chocolate to a whole new level. We use a shed load of sustainable cocoa. We use a drizzle of organic honey, a pinch of Dorset sea salt, a generous dollop of organic cream, and absolutely no palm oil. So you keep our products fresh in the fridge. Our most popular selling pack is our triple pack, and that retails for about 19 pounds. As they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Dragons, would you like to try some? Absolutely. <laughs> Can I check, are they, is there milk in? Yeah, unfortunately. Darn, this is going to be like torture, isn't it? Sorry. You're going to give all of them the chocolate and <laughs> sorry, I'm going to have to watch sorry, them. Sorry. Just put those ones here. <laughs> Restaurant quality, fresh and chilled chocolates for the home market is the brainchild of Giles Atwell and Steve Russell. Thank you. Cheers. £90,000 is the amount the entrepreneurs are asking for in return for 9% of their business. Peter Jones is first to quiz the sweet treat twosome. Stephen Giles. Well, that's a good start to the pitch when you get chocolate. <laughs> I'm, I was particularly hit when you said, Giles, you have a 100-year family history in chocolate. Yes. My grandfather began a chocolate business in 1921. He worked on the first chalk ice in the UK in 1927. My dad carried on, but he's, he's very much retired now, although he's fascinated with what we're up to. <laughs> yeah. When you spoke to your father about setting up a chocolate business, hmm. what did he say to you? I mean, his initial reaction was, you're nuts, to be honest. Because, you know, why would you step away from a, from a big corporate career and do something that's much riskier? Yeah, and what was the corporate career? I spent 14 years at Cadbury, and I was marketing director of a, of a 500 million pound chocolate business in Brazil. Wow. And my background is I've worked in chocolate the last 20 years, uh, first for Mars and then Cadbury. So I developed uh, Dark Milk and the Green and Blacks Velvet Edition. The last corporate job I did, we took the business from 50 to 100 million. And I think we back ourselves mm. to be able to hit those numbers and more. I'm actually deeply concerned because I've been trying to stay on top of my fitness. And with this sat next to me, there's a chance that all of my fitness goals are going to go to hell on a high horse because this is delicious, absolutely delicious. Their chocolates are hitting the spot and Giles and Steve's heavyweight CVs have also gone down well. The entrepreneurs have made a good first impression. But Tuka Suleiman wants to move on from the niceties and start talking numbers. So, for the next 12 months, yeah. your turnover, how does that look? Our first full year target is, is £105,000. So, modest? Yeah, I don't want to chase a target, I want to chase business and I want to get it right for the consumer. OK, so £105,000, your gross profit would be? £39,000. Right. And the second year? Second year target is uh, £390,000. Your projections that you've given me... Yeah. yeah. If you had a little corner shop selling chocolates, you'd take more money. If you took your chocolates and did a pop-up somewhere prominent, you'd probably take a grand a day, right? We're still a very, very small business, but we are hugely ambitious. Yeah. But it's a very, very niche market that you're now entering because you've chosen to go chilled with your product. I fundamentally disagree. If you look at other markets, I mean, pasta now, 30% of pasta is fresh. 
and it's a six and a half billion pound chocolate market. If half of that could be fresh in, I don't know, 20 years time, that's an enormous opportunity. The entrepreneurs reject Peter Jones's assertion that their chilled chocolates have a reduced market appeal. And it appears a combination of his taste buds and the pair's track record has spurred Stephen Bartlett to make a decision. I love the product and it tastes amazing. I think the brand, I think you've done a really good job with the brand as well. Your background is incredibly impressive. Your background is incredibly impressive. And your passion for chocolate can't be replicated or imitated. I'm going to make you an offer. However, I'm not going to offer you all the money because I do want to work with dragons on this business because this is a multifaceted challenge and every dragon brings something else to the table. So I'll offer you 45,000, half the money for 15% or I'm willing to split it any number of ways with my fellow dragons here. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Bartlett thinks the chocolate proposition could be a sweet investment and makes a move. However, any deal requires another dragon to match his terms. But first, Sarah Davies has a confectionery confession that she'd like to make. Guys, uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm actually quite an expert in this field. Oh, that's right. Yep, good. almost on a Steve level. Ooh. I have always handmade all of my own chocolates. Wow. I didn't and know I that. have honed that over the course of 10 years, and I have never tasted a chocolate as good as my own until just then. Thank you. Honestly, Thank you. I mean, outstanding. <laughs> so I would also be willing to offer you half the money for 15% of the business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. <laughs> You've got a good product. That, to me, is the most important thing. So I'm also willing to give you £45,000 for 15%. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Giles, I know that I can absolutely nail this for you because I've introduced hundreds of millions of pounds worth of products into the retailers in the UK alone. But I don't believe that you would get such a huge traction without somebody, particularly somebody like Stephen, frankly, because this is very clearly a direct-to-consumer piece. So I'm going to offer you half the money for 15%. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter Jones joins the half-offer party, but goes one step further naming a social media savvy Stephen Bartlett as the potential investor he'd like to pair up with to fuel inject future online sales. Will the only dragon who hasn't sampled the produce also propose a partnership? You two are incredibly impressive. So you won't be surprised at all to hear, I too am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 25% of the business, or I will offer you half of the money on the same basis as the other dragons, so for 15% of the business. <laughs> Back wall. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> In an unusual twist, it's a full house of half offers for the chocolate business, as all five investors are prepared to share a 30% deal with another dragon. Deborah Meaden is also willing to go it alone for a slightly smaller 25%. Five offers, that's um, not what we expected to be. But Steve and Giles are only offering 9% of their business. I think it's too much. Um, I want to see if they'll go a little low. But what do we do if they don't? Will they be able to broker a better deal? Um, we're blown away by having five offers. And we would love to work with Dragons to make this happen. 
the but from us is it's way too much of our business. What we put in as a percent is where we would like to be. And we're therefore a long, long way apart. We won't give up a big chunk of our business. I would personally be willing to drop to 10% for my half of the money, 45,000. I don't know if there's any... Yes, I'd certainly, I'd be prepared to do that. I would also be willing to do that. So I will also go for 10%, 45,000. I would love to have a lifetime's free supply of those chocolates. So as long as that was thrown in with the deal, <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> you could count me in. Yeah. There's a psychological point about 20. We have our new hazelnut and our orange in the fridge. <laughs> if we give you a taste of our new products, can we, can we get a percent off? Oh, he knows right how to go for me, doesn't he? <laughs> Charles, did you just value 1% of your business as a hazelnut chocolate? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, I did. And 1% for orange. As an orange. That was the, that, that's, that's what I'd like to do. <laughs> Giles, Steve, I, do you know what? I'm actually going to withdraw. Because mm. if you can't right. go yes at the end of this deal, there's no point doing it. So I'm going to gracefully withdraw and say, I'm out. All right. Um, this, is, this is not an easy Christ. conversation. But the opportunity that most excites us is, is you two here, the combination of the retail and the, and the social. That combination for us feels very strong. On that basis, I'm not going to stand by and be an option. So for that reason, I'm out. Guys, obviously there's an element of business here and there's an element of negotiation and gameplay. But as great as the chocolates are, I'm out. From having five offers, the duo are suddenly down to two dragons as their efforts to negotiate cause some of their potential investors to see red. Only Stephen Bartlett and Peter Jones remain. And it appears they're not too happy either. I'm starting to feel a bit uncomfortable as well. We've gone from 30% down to 20%. And you'd have two powerhouse dragons on your team. You're wanting to get slightly more You've talked about one percentage. What will happen is you'll walk out here and we don't get anywhere. All right, um, we'll go with 20% and we'd love to work with you, Peter, and you, Stephen. Yes! yes. <laughs> That's the yes we want. Well, I'll be a customer. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Thank All you. Thank you. Yes, well done. Thank After going down a very rocky road, the chance-taking chocolatiers finally chalk up a deal. They leave the den with the £90,000 they were seeking and two sweet-toothed dragons very much on board with their business. We never expected that. We, we never dreamt of that. I do feel very much like a real-life Willy Wonka, yeah. They've made me feel that today. You are going to be fat as a house, Mr Jones. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so pleased you said going to be. Yeah. <laughs> now, putting their business relationship to the test in the den are life partners Paul Maiden and James Findlay. They took the decision to move from the rat race to the wilderness and, once there, were inspired to create gourmet chocolate. We are as far north and as far west as you can possibly go on the mainland. Everything we do is ten times harder than doing it anywhere else. We're really passionate and we haven't lost any of that passion even when we're exhausted. It's our life. Sweet. 
Hello, I'm Paul and this is James. We're the founders of Coco Mountain. Uh, we're here today to present an opportunity for the Dragons to invest £80,000 in our rather remarkable, unique chocolate business and our world famous hot chocolate drink. What percentage? For 15%. We founded the business in 2006 and we're located in the far northwest of Scotland by Cape Wrath, the most beautiful place in Britain. Uh, stunning mountains, glorious beaches, lochs, wildlife, it's spectacular. And our goal with Coco Mountain was to create a business that matched that scenery and create a paradise in heaven. Our aim was very simple. We wanted to use only the finest ingredients. It was ethical, it was fairly sourced, and taste meant everything. We did it ourselves 100% and we did it our way. We have an online business where we sell our, our products online to customers all over the world. We also supply, um, we also, excuse me, we also supply um, a lot of uh, bars to independent retailers and at the moment we've just secured a larger premises of 350 square metres which we're, we're moving to in the next few weeks and this is based an hour from our existing location but one hour north of Inverness still in the, in, in the North West Highlands. Uh, the hot chocolate market in the UK alone is worth £120 million and we feel that the competition is poor by and large. We think our product could be a major success in the UK and abroad and even taking a small share of that market we can generate significant products, uh, profits from this product alone. Thank you for listening to our pitch. Just to maybe comment that as times are tough out there People need the best hot chocolate. Handmade chocolate from the Highlands is the package on offer from slightly nervous entrepreneurs Paul Maiden and James Findlay. Ladies first. Oh, hey, okay. Thank you very much. They're hoping for a tasty £80,000 in return for 20% of their culinary company. Thank you very much. But will their products pass the taste test of the notoriously hard to please foodie dragon, Sarah Willingham? Guys, when you talk about where you live and where you produce this, your eyes light up. I mean, it, and it, it, it's almost like you can taste it in the chocolate. It's real magic. It's like the traditional Italian hot chocolate. When you go to Italy, this is what you get served, and it's fantastic. We have masses of customer testimonials as to how good this product is. It's very, very different from, I suppose, the kind of hot chocolate that most of us grew up with, which was mostly milk. This is pretty much like molten chocolate. I have no objection to that whatsoever, uh, but it, it is a very different drink from milk with a bit of flavouring. The key is this. This is the, uh, this is the hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. OK. And... I taste that. It's going to be very bitter, isn't it's it? It's not going to be too bitter, actually. But what it is is very concentrated. And then that's dissolved into milk. It's just dissolved into milk, and you have a proper hot chocolate made at home. That is rest right on my pat. I love that. Thank you. OK. The first hurdle cleared. Praise all round for the chocolate. Oh, wow. With even a usually poker-faced Peter Jones declaring himself a fan. Now for the small matter of that remote Scottish location. I've been here. It's in Durness, the, yeah. the Balaknal Craft Village. That's right, yeah. Just round the corner from Tongue. Yeah. Well, it's an hour away from Tongue. But well, yeah. that's just round the corner in, yeah. in, in that context. I've yeah. been there, yeah. Yeah. OK, it used to be a sort of a... It used to be a kind of a commune, didn't it? Well, what happened was the hippies moved in. Yeah. And then, after the hippies were kind of ejected, uh, an initiative was taken to form a craft village there. And so our, our environment is us and lots of other little businesses who are artists and craftspeople. I've been there, yeah. and it's a lovely, lovely place for people who want to kind of step out of the world. Um, it's, it's, it's a diabolical place to set up business. What were the numbers like for the last 12 months in we terms of sales? Mm -hmm. Our sales were, uh, um, our gross sales were 260,000. Okay. And 
profit. The, gr uh, the net gross profit was 183. Ha okay, gross profit 183, yeah. And the net profit 100, uh, sorry, 50, 57,000. 57,000. And that is after, after paying yourselves a, 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 a normal salary? Yes. Um, okay, so you've got a business, but that is after nine years. So why do you think that in the last nine years you haven't turned that into a significant business? It's about production. We live in a part of the country where there are 200 people spread out over 200 square kilometers. Uh, we can't recruit enough people, um, and hence we can't grow the business. We have um, turned away countless requests for us to supply businesses. Do you have any, any, any concrete orders? We've never been able to accept orders. We've always said no. If you imagine the situation where you have far more demand than you can supply, the last thing you want to do as a business is promise more than you can deliver. No, 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 no but let, let's put this into context. It's, it's, I mean, I, you know, I love the Scottish story and so on, but you've already told us that the, the only consequence of you being in, in, in this beautiful part of Scotland that you're in um, <clears throat> is that you can't find anyone to help you with the production. Um, we supply I mean, local... This sounds like a business prevention department. Nick Jenkins expresses concerns about the infrastructure available to their company. Has the remoteness of the operation become a sticking point for a company clearly going places? Does it frighten you to move back down near us? No. No, not at all. For the last five years now, we've been looking for a reasonably located, much larger production unit that we can move into. And we've now found them. It took us a long time because we wanted to be close enough to our base because we will always call that home. But the thing is, if I was to invest in you today, I've got a funny feeling the next time we'd meet, I'd be in my 80s. <laughs> <We've> <laughs> and just... you'd be saying, hey, we've done really well, we've moved it really fast. Where are we? 320 no. grand. I can, I can see where you're coming from. But as I say, we've just, we're just about to sign a lease on what was a call centre. Yeah, but if it takes you seven years to sign a lease on a premises, it would worry me when your next meeting with Waitrose would be, it'd be called a different name. The inability of the gourmet chocolate entrepreneurs to scale up the business quickly enough has spooked the ever ambitious Peter Jones. And it's made Deborah Meaden question how big the business could ever get under Paul and James's direction. In my life, I've had to move places I really haven't particularly wanted to go, but I've had to go because that's what I needed to do to grow the business. And I do honestly think location, I know you think you're sorting it. Half an hour north of Inverness, you'd, you'd say was still too remote to produce efficiently. Or is it more the sales and marketing element? I think, or... it's, the, I think it's the sales. The truth of the matter is you have to knock on doors. Yeah. You know, somebody has to go there and stand in front of somebody and show it to them and get them to taste it and tell your lovely story. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with saying, I want it as a lifestyle business, but when you're looking for an investment, it, 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 it starts becoming a whole different dynamic. You know, an investor's going to say, well, OK, well, what have you got that's really going to drive this business forward? And you've got to admit that the story you've just told us, it's a lovely story, it's a great thing to do, but it, there's nothing in there that says you're going to go, right, now's our moment. Is that...? No, we're driven. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look I think, it! I think we're just... What do you mean, we don't, we don't look it? Yeah, we use a bit of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Paul and James are struggling to get their commitment across to the Dragons. Will artisan food lover Sarah Willingham convert her compliments for the cocoa into cash? Guys, I'm a bit sad. I am because I feel like what you're asking and what you're doing with the move to Inverness and everything, you're kind of compromising actually the real heart and soul of of what you've produced. My gut feeling for you guys is to stay where you are, focus on trying to find somebody who can produce this for you. We've found that person. Fantastic, and then sell it. It's just not an investment for me, so I'm afraid I'm out. Paul and James, I think what you guys need is a local investor. Somebody you could work with and you can get me mentoring with and somebody that has connections across the country. And I'm not that person. I'm afraid 
I'm not going to be your investor today, guys. So I'm out. I think that the chocolate is fantastic. The little sip of that was lovely. Did you enjoy the chocolates themselves? The cho these chocolates, I've just eaten them, apart from those two, but lovely. So, guys, whilst your product is brilliant, my sense of urgency is we, we, we run at different paces. I think working, we, we'd, we'd struggle. I wish you every best of luck with this, because I think the product is great. Thank you. But I'm not going to invest in you. I'm going to say that I'm out. As a fourth dragon bows out, the temperature in the den is rising. And Nick Jenkins is feeling far from chilled out about this brand's potential for growth. This is a really, really difficult market to crack, and you have created a big, a big obstacle. I want people who are hungry to, to, to do business. You've just been turning it away for the last nine years. What this tells me, unfortunately, is that I shouldn't be backing you. We've been looking for expansion of Not production Not very hard. We know, can't... We, a hungry person... There are a limited number of factories available that's which why, are accessible to us. That's why people don't set up businesses up there. Well, that's why we didn't set up a business up there initially with the aim of growing it into a global brand. But that's what's happening. It's been a phenomenon. We have, we have customers from all over the world. Not much of a phenomenon, isn't it? I mean, that's, it's an underwhelming phenomenon. So I'm afraid, for, 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 for all of those reasons, wish you the best of luck, but I'm out. OK. So Paul and James leave the den and prepare for that 500-mile journey home with Dragon approval for their product, but none of their hunger to invest. Tried. Right. Yes. <laughs> They've produced a great product. Fantastic. Fantastic. Do you, do you like that chilli and lemongrass? I've eaten, I've eaten it's a quarter product. of that bar. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's a great product, but <clears throat> they obviously went there for a lifestyle reason, and they haven't got over that. Together, I think we're a great team. And when we put our necks on the block like we've just done today, then I think it's just going to make us stronger. We shouldn't underestimate what we can achieve. <laughs> Linus Gorp is last up tonight. He's an entrepreneur who's thrown out the rule book with his approach to everything he does. I love life. Life is a dance for me. I play a lot. I go in the woods. Um, I eat a lot of healthy food. I love clean living. Um, I love women. Oh, I love women. I feel quite confident that I will choose the right dragon to invest in me. Just from feeling the energy I feel from them. I feel more drawn to Sarah at the moment. But will the dragons share the entrepreneur's faith in his success in the den? Hello, dragons. I'm Linus, and my company is the Raw Chocolate Company. I'm here today to ask for a £72,000 investment for a 5% stake in my company. I manufacture and sell raw chocolate bars, raw chocolate covered berries, and a range of superfoods. The company has been going from strength to strength year after year. The products are sold in, in, the, in, in independent health food stores all across the UK. I've had Holland and Barrett knocking on my door, and um, I had to say no because I didn't have enough cash in the bank nor space to hold enough stock for them. So I'm here now to ask for that little extra help to get the raw chocolate company into the mainstream UK market. So, I hope, come and join me. Would you like to try some? Oh, yes. Please. Chocolate with a wholesome twist. That's the package on offer from Linus Gore. He's looking for £72,000 for a 5% bite of his company. The flavour's fantastic. Thank you. Restaurateur and professional foodie Sarah Willingham is first to chow down on the business. Linus, hi. Hello. To the ignorant person, what, is, what does raw mean? So imagine you have an apple that is nice and fresh, and in the other hand, you have an apple that you've put in the oven 
for two hours at 200 degrees, which one would you imagine would make you feel better? For me, it's the fresh apple. And is this something that, in general, demand is growing for? Yeah, it's definitely growing. Like, I go into my local Marks & Spencers and I buy my uh, superfood salads. Describe, if there was anything bad about these, what would it be? The one you would pick up on would be the fat content, which is the same fat content as any chocolate. So it's no worse, it's but it's it actually no cooked. better. So the sugar content, when comparing it to other chocolate, same? No, I use coconut palm sugar, which is um, not refined white sugar. It's a That's sugar that has been made from... So it's unrefined. Uh, but yeah. it's unrefined, it's boiled, so it doesn't raise your blood sugar levels. Linus, can I just ask, what's the towel on the side? Because uh, it made you sort of like trademark. a cross between a Viking and a window cleaner. It's the Linus so, trademark. Is it really? Yeah, So it's. I wear it all the time. I think a lot of this is very much about people, Linus, and you are, um, you're a really genuinely, genuinely nice person, but at the same time, um, the product, I think it's the best in terms of chocolate that I've ever seen that's come into the den. Really. Thank you. Linus has yet to put a foot wrong, as his chocolate and ethos prove a big hit with the dragons. Now, Sarah Willingham wants to delve into the detail of his supply chain. Where are you sourcing everything from? What's your relationship like? Well, I with your buy them supply? from a UK importer, and they buy them from Peru. What proportion of your cost of sales is the chocolate? I would say 75% Whoa! is the chocolate, chocolate and the chocolate ingredients. I'm, I'm an expert at sourcing. So okay. have you ever been to Peru? No. If I was you, I'd get on the next plane to Peru and work out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's like myself. In my businesses, right, I say to my people, we cut out the middlemen. We go direct. This you know? is what I want to do. You can do it. What's been stopping me faith. is they want payment up front. Don't worry about that. We might get to that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. But I'm going to ask you another question. What would happen if I invested in your business and I said to you, I've got great contact in your favourite store. My you, favourite store? You mentioned it earlier on. Did I? Yeah, you said I shop in so-and-so. Oh, right, my hair. Uh, that would be Infinity Foods in Brighton. No, you told me Marks and Spencers. Oh, right. I did, yes. You did? Yes, I did say... No, I have an amazing contact at Marks and Spencers, and I know they would love this. Sounds good. The potential to cut out the middlemen and boost the company's profits expertly identified by Tuka Suleiman. Sarah Willingham, who's managed some of the world's most successful restaurant chains, seems the perfect fit for investment. Will she want to add the brand to her food business portfolio? I love what you do, um, but I don't think I am the best person to invest in this in terms of getting you into the mainstream supermarkets, which is actually what you are poised to do. I think you'll be very successful. Thank you. But for those reasons, I'm not going to make you an offer, and I'm out. She was Linus's preferred investor, but Sarah Willingham makes a surprise exit from the deal. Will Deborah Meaden go the same way? Well, I... I like this. You're good, and I like it when the, the person fits the product and, you, and there's an authenticity about you. Thank you. So I'm going to make you an offer. OK. I'm going to offer you £72,000, and I want 10% of the business. Thank you. A change in fortune for Linus as Deborah Meaden raises the bar with an offer, but a double the equity stake he was willing to give away. Nick Jenkins is next to have his say. I, uh, I love the product and I think it has great authenticity. Um, I would love a part of this, but I don't want to offer all of the money, but I would love a piece of it, but I would have to tag along with some of the other dragons. So I'm going to offer you £36,000 for 4% of the business. Thank you. Nick Jenkins has an appetite to spend, 
but needs another investor to complete his bid. Will that dragon be Tuka Suleiman? My background is sourcing around the world. My background is manufacturing and my background is distribution. I believe that I've got more time, Tuka time, than any of the dragons here, right? I can mentor you in your production and your distribution and open channels for you. Now, you've had a part offer from uh, my colleague and I, and I have a lot of faith that Nick can give you a lot of online, and online is important. Yeah. And what I want to do is offer you the other half, but I want 6%. Because I believe... Thank you. I can offer you more. Controversial. Thank you. An offer from Tuka Suleiman, but it comes at a price, 6% of the company. 2% more than Nick Jenkins was asking for. Deborah Meaden is the only investor with a solo offer, £72,000 for 10% of the business. But Peter Jones has yet to join the bidding war. Well, Linus, I bet you didn't expect that today, did you? Um, uh, yes. You did expect this today? Yeah. Wow. Do you want me to make you an offer? Yes. The, the thing is, I'm concerned that I'm up against it. I don't mind saying that out loud. Um. <sighs> to a tea break, Nick. Sorry. Um. I'm going to make you an offer. Thank you. Uh, I, I want 20% of the company, Linus. Do you now? Very cheeky. <laughs> and, and, and the reason for that is that if I was to own 20%, it would get much more of the attention that I think you're going to need and you're looking for. But to give you a little bit of value back, I have the ability to give you more money than the money you've asked for. So I'm going to offer you £90,000 for 20% of the company. Thank you, Peter. A tactical manoeuvre from Peter Jones as he ups the ante by bidding higher than his dragon counterparts. But it looks like he's got some heavyweight competition. I like you. So I'm going to make you a, another offer, if I'm allowed to. I don't know. We Do what you like. Break, break OK. The, break the I'll give you £100,000 for yes. 20%. Right. I want to be part of this, and I think we can go on a great journey. So does that mean that the first offer, you two together, is not valid anymore? Or? Well, that, that, that's assumed that, I, that is assuming that I agreed to it, which I wouldn't have done. So that, okay. that's... I, oh, I see. I, that yeah, wouldn't yeah. have suited me. Yeah. So I'd love to participate. You know how I'm going to support your business? I'm going to buy a lot of this chocolate. <laughs> right. But I don't think I can participate in either of these two deals. So for that reason, I'm afraid I'd be out. Three dragons at Linus's disposal. Deborah Meaden's offering £72,000 for 10% equity. Peter Jones wants 20%, but for £90,000. And Tuka Suleiman also wants 20%, but for £100,000. Thanks. I like to have all three of you. But I'm not going to go for that, because that's not an option. Um... I'd like to go for... Deborah. Fantastic. Well done. Job done. And just so you know, you probably don't want three dragons. You'd only have us arguing. Congratulations. I'm really Thank pleased you. with that, and I'm very excited. This is exactly what I was looking for.
Linus exits the den with a golden ticket to success. Yay! Don't celebrate. Good for you. Courtesy of his new multimillionaire business partner. Deborah, well done. Great guy. I think he's Great good. product. Yeah. I'm pleased he walked out with him. I'm jealous. Yeah. No, it's good. He's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, he's Very good. good. I think... He's just spot on. It's just yeah. its moment. Ah! Ah! The Viking. Ah!